feels good to be sitting in the sun again. A little bit of warmth mixed in with the cold from the chill last night. It feels good to have this new setup that I have for the plants to be put away into a kind of like a hothouse I made for them. So that way I can bring them out in the daytime and let the sun cause them to bloom. You know, it feels good when God causes his face to shine upon you because you bloom when he's looking at you or when he's paying attention to you. But there are times in your life when you're going to go through tribulations. You're going to go through challenges that are going to rock you to the very foundation of your soul. Sometimes you think you got it all together and you know you've got everything all prepared and you've got your armor and your shield and your faith and everything all put together just the way you think is going to withstand all the tribulations that you thought were going to happen. But you see, Jesus himself, we're told, learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Jesus himself in this world suffered. So will you. God put Jesus finally in the crucible of the greatest challenge of his life in the Garden of Gethsemane when he had to choose knowing full well what it was going to cost him. Whether he could get out of doing what God wanted him to do or whether he would go through all that God intended to do and allow be done to it. Which, to put it bluntly, no one has ever suffered or gone through those things that we're told that Jesus went through when it came to the beatings and the crucifixion. The crucifixion actually probably was nothing compared to the Garden of Gethsemane, but he agonized in preparation. God is preparing you for life. He is always taking you through little trials and you know little tests and little things to build your faith so that you can grow, so you can develop, so that you can become more like Christian or Christ-like or being the person that God wants you to be. You know, like Jesus. Jesus greatly affected the entire world. If you're cruising along and you're snoozing along, you know, and you seem to be going everything hunky-dory and fine, I have news for you. It's going to change. All hell will break loose one day. Somehow, some way in your life, you will have some type of challenge in some way come into your life, whether it be something like a, a notification that you, oh my God, your x-rays come back and you've got cancer. Or some other way that shakes you personally to your core, whether it be your children or your, your spouse, or maybe, maybe it's a loved one, or maybe it's you yourself in some spiritual way. I know for myself this last week, I've gone through a real huge crushing and just stomping on it. And it's like, whoa, man. I just want to grab my little stuff there and hang on for dear life. <laughs> it's like, whoa, man, I can't even see straight. But at the same time, in overcoming that, Jesus said in the letter to the seven churches to each one of them specific things that he wanted them to do because in each one there were specific issues that he was still working on in that person's life. And I too, like you, have issues that God is removing from my life. And I was crushed. <laughs> and still am. And I'm still reeling from it. And it's greatly affecting me. But at the same time, I kind of stepped out in this new way that God wanted me to share the book of Revelation, which was kind of a, a new series of letters to seven churches called Seven Texting to the Nation or Texting to the Seven Continents. Seven Letters to Seven Nations. And it's really exciting because I'm looking forward to what God's going to do with it. And it's really whoa, kind of like for prophecy and stuff. But it's kind of neat. So I'm really kind of thrilled about it, but at the same time, when you do something that God is really like, you know, inspiring He's going to crush you and allow circumstances in your life to destroy you, really, all the way down to where he can form you and fashion you 
into the person he wants you to be. Don't be surprised when fiery, I mean really serious trials come upon you. Don't be shocked when you think you got it all together and you've been through, oh sure, lots of, you know, big major challenges, because I faced death before, you know, I've had doctors tell me I was dying, and I've had, you know, major illnesses affect me, I've had lots of things come, in, come and go, and they're gone, and I'm healthier and can be, you know, at least, sort of, <laughs> more or less, <laughs> I'm here, <laughs> but in all of these things, what I'm telling you is, you will get crushed again, and again, and again, it will get to the point where God will take you like Abraham to that place where you will put it all on the line and will you give up your life or your son to demonstrate your love for God? Abraham was put to the very challenge of all of our faith. And we say somehow that, you know, in our nice, comfy, contemporary Christian world, we don't have to make those choices. But I see it in every Christian's life. Sooner or later, it comes. It happens. And it will to you. Jesus doesn't give you a free, easy, clear life. But he says, look, if they've so crucified me and beat me and despised me and chose to whip me and kill me, will they not likewise do to those who follow me? That's what you have in store as far as a promise from God. You see, those are the promises of God that people don't want to tell you. Oh, they'll tell you about prosperity, and they'll tell you about abundant life, and peace, and love, and joy, and meekness, and kindness, and gentleness, and all these other things of the Spirit. But they don't tell you that you got to crucify the flesh, you know, to get there. Or that God will do it for you. He'll nail your high to the wall in order to change you into the image He wants. And that may mean that taking that piece of paper that you are and cutting it out a way you don't like. Guess what? That's God's right. So, you are going to overcome by the word of the Lord, by the testimony you have, and loving not your life even unto death, one way or another. You are going to fulfill the destiny that God has for you, or you will be a vessel of dishonor. But being a vessel of honor, no matter who you are or how you are, you will be faced with challenges, turmoils, tribulation, and that crushing moment when you'll make that final decision to follow God or we walk away. Peter had that problem. You see, Peter finally came to this place where thousands of people were following Jesus and suddenly he says, look, eat my body, drink my blood. And they're like, uh-uh, and they, they walked away. They said, man, there ain't no way, Jack. I ain't doing that. I, you know, you got nice miracles, you know, you fed us with food, you know, and kind of, you know, fishes and loaves, you know, we kind of like that kind of thing, but don't give me this eat my body thing, you know, we've seen that before. And so they walked away. And as they did, they didn't even ask, they just walked away from Jesus. And Jesus turns to his disciples and says something very profound. He says, will you leave me also? And only Peter pipes up, in this case, righteously, and says, where would we go? Really, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. You know, and he, Jesus commends him and says, Flesh and blood is not revealed to you, but Father in heaven. And you know, anytime we do something right, really, it's our God helping to inspire us to say the right thing, you know, at the right moment. Because most of the time, we really don't. But when we do, it's usually God speaking through us so that others will be aware of it. And that's what people are doing when they watch you, when you are crushed, when you are stomped on, when you are really facing it. How will you react? You know, who's the rejoicing Christian at a funeral? Or who's the mourning one who's just going, Oh God, I want my mommy. Be real. You'll see your mommy in heaven. You'll see your daddy in heaven. If they're saved, if they're not, they're in hell. And they had every opportunity. Because your father is in heaven. That is your father. And we're told, according to Scripture, New Jerusalem is the mother of us all. So, <laughs> guess what? These biological parents that kind of participated in our physical body really are our brothers and sisters just kind of like, you know, occupying the space until we find the place of faith to walk with our real father who is in heaven. Do you see it? No? Okay. 
You'll get it. But the point being is that when you are crushed, and you will be, when you are stomped on, and you will be, and when you are really not, you know, like, at the end of your rope, I mean, one of those kind of trials, remember, you still can cry out to God. You can still ask God. You won't feel like you can. You won't feel right. You won't feel as though you're a Christian. You won't have those feelings that, you know, you were so excited about that, you know, you could go automatically and pipe on a, you know, praise music or worship tape, you know, and you could just jump right in there and be, oh, I'm one of the righteous. Only, you're more righteous when you feel like you're one of the destitute, broken, and a contrite spirit than you are when you think you're righteous and holy with all the saints singing in the heavens, you know, and rejoicing in the church and singing in the choir. Because God says you're closer to Him when you are broken and of a contrite spirit. When you are smashed and dashed and really feel like it's over, that is the moment God comes through. Don't despise that. Don't run away from it. Don't, don't be gun shy. But in reality, be aware that God is there. Be knowledgeable that God is using that in order to accomplish His purpose. Sometimes it means you have to, you know, like back up, sit down, take stock, maybe even kind of like, you know, do some crying or some mourning or some, you know, like whoa study <laughs> but you'll get it give yourself time and let God work in you through that process because once you come out on the other side you'll be so much stronger than you are before and you will have scars make no mistake in heaven there is one person who will bear all the scars of what his journey here was like because it's a testimony of what grace costs and it does cost. It's not just a free gift given to you that nobody had to pay for. As a matter of fact, grace was only extended to you by God because the price was paid for it by Jesus. Don't ever think grace is free. It costs the Son of God his life. So when you were challenged in that last moment, you know, that you really, you know, think you're not gonna come through, just remember. God is for you. God is with you. And Jesus has been there. He knows what you're going through. He trusts you enough to bring it to you and let you endure the same things that he had to go through. Blessed are you if you endure these things as a faithful son. For when the son, after he has been purged, will come forth shining his righteousness, as the son of righteousness rising with healing in his wings, he will cause you once again, to know the joy of your Lord. And you will find in that day that when you pass through the trials and tribulations of this world that you have agonized over and you have been broken from and you have been contrite and humbled, then you will find yourself hearing the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant.